Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mind and Muse Crafts Podcast. I am your host Caroline and I am recording from my son's home in Alabama. And this is what I believe will be the last episode that I will record in Alabama before I head back to my home, which normally is on the island of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean where I live with my husband. Now, I really don't have a lot of crafting to share with you because I've been like focused on a specific project, but I did want to share what I was what I have been up to in the past couple of weeks with you before I return home because I'll be right in the middle. I'll be traveling home at the end of this month, so I will not be able to record until May. So I want to just try and get this out for you. Anyway, I've got my grandson taking a nap, so I have to get this done while he naps. We'll see how far I get. If not, it will probably then be done in slices so that I can get it all done before the end of the day. Thank you for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, I'm really glad that you decided to press that watch button and to come and see what this is all about. If you are a returning viewer, I am very thankful for your friendship and because you return here every couple of work, weeks coming to see what I am up to. As you all know, I come on here every couple of weeks to share with you the crafty side of my life and I usually start out by sharing with you how I would wear something that I have made because one of the things that we talk we have talked about here in the past is the fact that we should not just craft to craft. It's very easy to fall down that rabbit hole. I'm just making to make. But with this the state of things in the world, it is probably better if we actually make things that we can use or that we can give to people who will use them. So I am wearing for you today a design by Clarissa Beth of Crochet Cakes, and it was called the, or it is called the Shield Maiden. The Shield Maiden that she designed using Homemaker by, is it by Premier Yarns? I will, in the description box below, link to all of the patterns that I mentioned or to specific tutorials that I think can help you out with what I, what I have been practicing over the last couple of months, or in this case, to yarns that I mentioned and really don't remember um, <laughs> the company or the dyer that creates them. In this case, I know this is made with a very thick yarn, I know that yarn is used for home decorations and that it's got sort of like an outside polyester mesh maybe that is stuffed with filling. And so it's a very, it's a very soft and squishy kind of yarn. Very thick, soft and squishy. And even though it is that way, it puts together this fabric and this shield mating design that is quite usable even in summer months. So it is something that I have used frequently. However, I have used it more here because of the fact that I have left some things here in Alabama in my son's home so that I don't have to always keep bringing things back and forth. And a lot of, not a lot, but some of the crochet that I have at some point brought down or made here has actually stayed behind because I actually get more use out of it here. So the shield mating today is being, and I'll put a picture up here of the complete design. If I can find a photo on um, in my storage on this camera, and maybe I can borrow a photo from Clarissa Bitt's actual pattern in case you haven't seen this design before. I think it's a good one, but that is something normal <laughs> because of the fact that um, most a lot of times I tech edit for close of it. So I'm very tempted to try out those things that I 
go over for her in terms of the numbers. I'm usually at the end very tempted to try out how that is actually going to work up and look in some yarn that I have my mind on at home. And this was one of them. Although I did want to work this one up in the exact yarn that she used because I kind of figured that using a thinner yarn or a yarn of another blend wouldn't give the exact same look because it's called the shield maiden because since the yarn is kind of stuck well to me you know i mean i don't know the reasons that carissa had but my the way i see it is it's very sturdy fabric so it kind of like feels like you have a shield on although the bottom part has a flower pattern that she has used and several of her designs so you can go check that one out and i am accompanying this design this make with a my mushroom earrings which are a design that are on my website mindandmusecrafts.com and there is the written pattern and it this one also has a video a video to show you how i made it so um yeah you can also check that out if you would like. Um, that's what I'm wearing today. Okay, what have I been up to? I have been obviously taking care of my grandson and in between, I showed you last week a pattern that I had begun, which was also a design by Clarissa Beth and it was called the Crochet pullover crochet hooded pullover I think that's what it's called the crochet hooded pullover by Clarissa Beth but it was made in collaboration with Premier Yarns and so they have all the rights to it it is free on their website and um, basically it was made with Premier anti-pilling yarn everyday worsted and I had never used this one before but my experience is that I really like the feel of it it feels a little bit cottony so it's got like that cotton feel to it um it's soft but at the same time sturdy and it was super easy to find the center pull notice they've got two steps here the first one is you pull out from one end one of the ends and then the other end the center pull is very easy to find and that was my experience I purchased eight eight um one 100 gram uh skeins 100 grams has 180 yards and it's a number four it's worsted I do see some pilling on it. I do see some hairs sticking out and I'm hoping it doesn't get worse. We'll see. I've never used this yarn before. The idea of anti-pilling is that you can wash it and you won't get all of the, the fluffiness that comes out from the acrylic um, threads. So I don't know. I'll let you know when I wash it because I haven't washed it at all. But you get 180 yards in this 100 grams, which is, I think, typical for a worsted weight. And they suggest using a 5.5 millimeter hook, which is what I used. Not necessarily because they recommended it, but because it was the largest hook size that I had here. And um, it's the colorway is linen. The colorway is linen. Now, I purchased eight because I was going to make size large because of the fact that I did a gauge swatch and my gauge was way off with the even with the largest hook that I had so I decided that I would make it a bit bigger and hopefully that would work <laughs> in terms of the fit and so I worked on a large in a 5.5 millimeter hook the pattern suggests using a 5.5, a smaller hook, and a larger hook. So I don't know. They don't mention the sizes, but I guess if you do 5.5, then you can go down to a, 
uh, 5 or 4.5 and go up to a 6 or whatever. And that's for the ribbings. Because of the ribbons that she makes, for example, the ribbing of the cuff in the smaller one and the ribbing of the body in the larger one, trying to keep everything looking nice and even. Now, it's not always that you can make a pattern or a design exactly as the pattern states because of the fact that all of our bodies are different. And so I did adjust some other things in addition to making a large size, and I'll tell you about them. But first, let me show you. This is the completed hoodie. I am going to start by inserting a video here so you can actually see how it looks on me. And then we'll come back and talk a little bit about it. Okay, so I hope um, you were able to see how it, it fits on me. And it is called the hoodie pullover because it has a hoodie, it has a hood on it. And it is not a cardigan because it doesn't separate in the front. It does not come with pockets. That was one of the things that I wanted, I felt that I wanted. I was um, imitating my favorite hoodie that they always have pockets in them. Now, even though I I copied the shape of the pockets of my favorite hoodie onto a paper, and I tried to do as I do in my free form and crochet back and forth, making sure that I'm, I fit the pattern all the way, but I, I must not have fit the pattern all of the way because I do feel that these are um, the depth. The depth is less than what my hoodie actually has, but I think they'll serve their purpose. So let's see. I made a large, and so I followed the numbers for the large in the pattern with a 5.5 millimeter hook. Um, the original design is a bit short it's just kind of like a short hoodie it's not one of the long ones but i wanted it to be longer so i simply added length when she says crochet until you reach i don't know 10 10.5 inches i crocheted a little bit longer actually what i did was i crocheted the front panel with all of the i crocheted the front panel until i ran out of one ball when i ran out of one ball then there i did the armhole shaping and the neck shaping that is included in the pattern. So that's kind of how I worked it. A whole ball for the front panel and for the back panel and then everything else, an additional ball to work up the shaping for the armhole, for the shoulder. And it worked out well. The length of it for me, I am about a five point, uh, five foot four in height. So it worked out for me. I like the length of it. Now I did add length to also the bottom border because again, I was trying to use up all of the yarn in, I didn't want to leave balls that are started over. This is the only skein that I have left and it is complete. So I tried to use up everything else. So I added length to the bottom ribbing I also added length to the sleeves. See, I don't know if you can see the little hairs. You might not be able to, but I did add length to the sleeve because Clarissa Bit kind of likes her sleeves a little bit short so they don't actually touch her wrists. And I actually like them to go a little bit past my wrist. So in addition to making a longer sleeve, I also made a longer cuff.
This cuff is also a bit longer, but again, I was doing it because I wanted to use up all of the seven skeins. I didn't want, I mean, why have some left over? So if I had anything left over, I went back. And when I saw I was gonna have left over, I went back and I added to the cuffs on both the sleeve and the body. The last thing I did um, was to make the pockets because I was kind of like, oh, maybe it's just gonna need pockets because I'm a lazy kind of person. My, my father would always say that, that anybody who walks around with their hands always in their pockets is a lazy person. But if I have pockets, my hands are in them. So, and when I walk outside, this is, I think it's good for like fall and I don't know if even maybe early winter, if you're going to put a coat on top of it, it would kind of be kind of thick. It is thick, but you could, depending on how big your coat is, you could probably do that too. But I think that for me, I could use it in autumn and at the end of the winter where spring is approaching and it starts to get a little bit warmer, but still not cool enough for me to walk around, you know, like this. I am actually pretty cold today because it is an outcast sort of day. It's going to rain. There might be thunderstorms. And so I did have on a hoodie, but I wanted to wear something for the podcast and for this recording. And I didn't have anything with sleeves. So here I am suffering through it with you. I don't know what that was. Okay. So the pockets I made, like I said to you, I cut out a pattern shape of the pockets that are on my favorite hoodie. And then I simply crocheted back and forth until what I had, the fabric that I had, was looking like the pockets that I wanted. Now on the hoodie, this seam here goes through the front fabric. So your hands won't go past that, but I didn't do that because I found that it didn't have enough depth. So I needed to leave it open so I could kind of like put my hands together on the inside. What I'm thinking about now is the possibility of adding a ruffle here because I've got a bit left, adding a small ruffle here along the edges to use what I have left. And maybe that will add just a little bit of depth to, to reach so I can have my whole hand in it up to my wrists. That if that were to happen, it would happen already back at home because one of the reasons why I am recording today a little bit before my usual time, even though this should go up on the 30th, I'm recording a couple of days before because I need to send out a package home and this is going to go in the package because it's too big for me to carry. I already have another coat that I need to carry, etc. Anyway, um, let's talk about the stitch now. This hoodie is made in extended half double crochet. And I don't know if you can tell the difference just by looking at it between, I'll take the back that's got long panel, between this stitch, it's made back and forth. So between this stitch and for example, the regular half double crochet, but there is a difference. And I am going to, in the description box, include a link to a nice article about extended stitches and how they compare an extended single crochet, how does it compare to the single crochet, how does it compare to the half double, how does it compare to the double, the extended half double, how does it compare to the regular half double, how does it compare to a double crochet, etc. And you do the same thing for each of those three, the single crochet, the half double crochet, and the double crochet stitch. And I think that there is a lot to learn from it. So you could read up on that to see, but there is, and I think she expresses it as this looking like more, the braid is kind of like thicker. And so it makes it denser. And I think, because one of the things I do not like about working with half double crochet for garments is I find it's, it, it leaves larger holes than I would like. Now the extended single crochet is a very nice stitch for garment fabric, I think. But for this hoodie, the extended half double crochet works or it works well. It has a, along the side, it has a detail of posts 
which I think I worked up very badly because it still has those holes that I talked about not liking last week. So if I were to do it again, I would definitely look into trying to eliminate those holes. Now, I saw a, another post where they say after you've made them, go on the along the inside of the fabric and kind of use a needle and thread to close the holes that are created because of the fact that you are not going into the stitch but into the post. So that difference between the top of the stitch and the post at the front creates a hole. And so they they actually thread, use thread to close up those holes. But I didn't do that. I could still do it. I have enough yarn to do it, but I haven't done it at present. It, for now, it's just a holy feature <laughs> on the side of my garment. Now, when I got to my ribbing at the bottom and I got to this center, I did two back post double crochets consecutively instead of switching from back post and front post as you do normally because I wanted it to look something like this, like the top part of it. So I'm okay with that. You might not be, but I'm okay with it. And um, what else can I tell you? So let's talk about, now that I talked about that, I'll talk about this fabric here. Because you'll notice, can you notice? Oh, if there's any way that I can help you notice that this fabric is different from this one. This is a lot looser and this is a light, lot tighter. And that is because I am also using a half double crochet, but I am using a half double crochet into the space below the stitch into the space below the stitch not into the stitch and that creates quite a different fabric it's a lot sturdier a lot denser a lot less holy and i really like that and if i were to do it again i think one of the things that i would like to do is to try to make a hoodie with this stitch i think it really feels like a sweater even though you can see holes still, but it does feel, it has a different feel to it, that's all. It's not as soft and saggy, and it doesn't have the drape that this had. So I thought that it was a good choice for pockets, because I didn't want to line them. I didn't want to have to line them, um, so I just used that stitch instead. Okay, so yeah, I think that is all I can say about this garment. It's nice and warm. It would be very nice to wear it today if I didn't have to pack it up and send it. And the construction, the pattern, you can follow it as written. And as I said, just be wary of your lengths in case you want a longer sleeve or a shorter sleeve or a longer cuff. Now, one thing I will tell you is that the half double crochet, if you have worked with it before, you work around, seam it, and then continue in the round, but you continue the round by joining. And if you do that with half double crochet, you get what is known as a traveling seam, which means that the seam starts out down here and then continues to travel, travel, or let's say, so if let's go around this way so you can see my hand, it continue, it just becomes crooked. It travels around your piece. So by the time you're finished, it will probably be somewhere else, but not along the edge along the bottom edge of your garment and that was something that I wanted to avoid because I had read about it before and so I'll also include a nice description of a method that can be used to straighten out your seam. I do believe that I have a short video that I can share with you but in addition I will include the link to the tutorial that I used. Chain two, complete your half double crochet in the same stitch. Work all the way around to the last stitch
work all the way around to the last stitch and join at the top of the half double crochet, not the chain two. Then on the second row, the second row, you chain one. You skip your first half double crochet, go to the second one and work all the way around. And when you reach the end, you'll be missing a stitch. So that last stitch you do, make it into that stitch that you skipped at the beginning, working over your chain one. And that will give you the amount of stitches that you had originally. And this going forward and coming back, going forward and coming back, going forward and coming back, helps keep your stitch straight because of the leaning nature of the um, half double crochet stitch. So it worked well on this side, but on the other side, I think I must have at some point done something wrong. I, I lost my rhythm in the row one and row two, and so it didn't come out as straight. Okay, so on this one over here, you can see that I've got it coming up, coming up here, and then here it goes a little bit to the side. It goes off to the side. So it doesn't look that bad, but it could have looked better. It's just that at some point I must have inverted my row one, row two, and so I got off track. I got off track. But the other sleeve does show you that it does work if you do it the right way. <laughs> So I'm happy with that also because I did not want to have a running seam along such long sleeves. So I'm glad that worked out well, at least okay. It's good enough for me. So yeah, I learned a lot of things on this project. And it's um, like I always tell you, I always try to pick up a project and read it through, understand how it's going to work. And from the beginning decide, well, there are some things that I would like different Lee, for example, I would like a shorter or a longer sleeve, a shorter or a longer cuff, a wider or a thinner bodice or, you know, longer or shorter neckline. Decide those things before. Decide what difficulties you can have. That's why it's a good thing to read blogs and to, and to watch videos, even if you're not working with that stitch at the moment, because that way you will anticipate that when you have a pattern that uses a certain stitch, you can anticipate what problems could occur before you go through the making and um, like waste time and energy on something that you would just have to rip back because I don't like the way it looked. Uh, and I know we don't do that all the time, and I probably don't even do that all the time, but I think it's a good thing. It's a good practice. It's a good practice. Okay. So, yes, I am. This garment, remember, it was my entry for Clarissa Bits Celebrations, Cal, and I am really happy that I got it done in time. So I will be posting to Ravelry and Instagram photos once this... Um, Recording is up because I don't want, I want you guys to see it before I show the world. And um, so if you're working on that, I hope yours is coming along well, your project. And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a project to celebrate her birthday. It does have to be one of her designs, but you can choose whatever reason you want to celebrate. And so you can just celebrate life if you want to. And so here I am celebrating my re-encounter with cold months. And I feel now that I am able to bear much, much, much more cold 
after this year of traveling back and forth in different climates than I did before. So I am celebrating. I don't know if that is over for me or not because I, I don't plan these things on a long-term basis. I just go month by month. But uh, this is my celebrating my grandson's progress because I decided to come back and face the cold. And so find something to celebrate. Celebrating is good for the heart. It's healthy for your mind. And um, it helps us always look at the bright side of our lives. And that's a good thing. So this is the Hooded Crochet Pullover by Clarissa Smith. And well, the design originally was hers. This one is mine. <laughs> Okay, I really am sad that I have to send this off and I won't be able to wear it here because it was a good day to wear it. Now, in addition to that, the only other project that I have been working on has been my freeform project. I worked very slightly, however, on the my pattern choice for my freeform bag which I still have not added. I have not committed to sewing the back on just in case um, something comes along and I want to do something else. But um, I have to do that before I leave because that also should go into the box. So this is my front. Okay. Do you remember the design that I showed you the last time? The sketch that you probably couldn't see too well, but it's supposed to be a bird I think it's a carpenter and then I added a tree coming up the side and there's like a branch coming up here where the bird is supposed to be perched on the branch so and the rest will be simply the blue sky and I'm going to use the same blue that I used for the back this blue here to kind of like connect the two designs so here's my birdie and I had a couple of full starts for the tree because the thing about freeform crochet is, okay, I knew I wanted to start out with this because a lot of trees associated with burrs have kind of like that hole in it or that, that uh, I know that probably has a name, but it's kind of like that spiral figure that trees have. Anyway, I knew I wanted to start out with that. But then the thing about it is, once you have that done, how do you join that to what you have made? Because of the fact that this is a circle, more or less a circular figure, and I want the end result to be sort of rectangular, well, I had a couple of false starts. But in the end, I chose to start at the bottom with extended, not extended, linked double crochets. And then I went up the side, went over the top, and then started going back and forth. This green part that we see here, we're also going to see it at the bottom, is supposed to be moss that is on the branches or on the tree, but I didn't have here any green color that actually looked like moss, so I just used the green that I had. So I figured, I mean, it's freeform, it's um, an artistic design, you've got the freedom to use realistic colors or Abstract colors, it's all up to you. So I went with using the green rather than not getting it done. So I hope to get this done here today because of the fact that this is lightweight and easy to fold. I can leave this behind and work on it for the next couple of days because I can take it in my backpack. My backpack basically is going to have my computer and so it won't have a lot of things. I always carry um, in my backpack a um, change of clothes in case I get stuck in an airport or I have some type of accident with food or whatever. So I always have that. And I usually have my jewelry and my makeup. So that's it. That's it. And then I can fit this in. I can fit this in because the clothes will just be a pair of leggings and a, a blouse to go over it, but nothing too heavy. So I'll be able to continue to work on this. So I'm going to continue in the gray. And I also use gray because 
I don't know, I didn't have brown or I didn't have that grayish, dark grayish brown that bark is around this time of year. So I just again used whatever I had. I don't know if I have enough of this to complete down here, but if I don't, I'll just use a, a lighter gray that I also have in my stash. So, well, in my stash here. And so besides that, the rest will all be blue and I've got enough of that. So it'll be simple in the sense, I don't know, maybe a leaf or two somewhere, just that rare leaf, maybe. He's missing the eye, I'll tell you that much because I, I always leave that type of thing for last because I'm afraid that I'm gonna get this evil eye and then I don't want that, but ultimately I have to make it. And the tail that I made up at the bottom, I used the Tunisian crochet knit stitch. So that's why I've got it pinned down because Tunisian crochet tends to coil. And so it's not that it's not flat, it's just that it's rolling because of the way you make, you work Tunisian crochet, but it will flatten out if you iron it. I just haven't had the chance to iron it. Okay, so what do you think? Well, that will be my front. And as I've stated before, this will be my back. And then my front. And hopefully on the inside, I'll be able to do something else here. I don't know. Maybe that's overdoing it. But I figured, I mean, I got the bag. I might as well do something with it. <laughs> Okay, so that's what I've been working at as of late. As I said, there's, I don't have a lot of things on the go. I am packing, I'm getting ready to go back home. And so making a lot of decision about what stays, what goes, and what is going to be um, donated. Because I, I always feel like these things are kind of like final and although deep down inside I know I'll come back I always want to leave everything settled in case I don't because you never know right life is life so you never know and so um I'm going back this weekend just in time for my husband's 60th birthday so I will be meeting up with Clarissa Beth in back home after I get there she's traveling so that we can do a little celebration for my husband's 60th birthday he doesn't know it's going to be a surprise well it'll be a surprise until he sees Clarissa Beth, but um, he doesn't watch this so I'm hoping that it will catch him by surprise and um so yeah I'm, I'm going back and I want to leave here at the end kind of like um collect a little bit of what my grandson is up to and all that and just kind of like close <laughs> this part episode in my life for all of you so it's been short but sweet thank you for joining me today and um hopefully i'll be able to talk to you again around maybe the 15th of next month where I'll be back at home in Puerto Rico working with those winter garments that I left behind and um, I don't know I sit down and I think why did those take me so long if here I was able to make this hoodie which essentially could have been a winter garment in only a couple of weeks I don't know I don't know I really don't know but um, yeah, maybe they were a bit longer because I was trying to make them tunic length and whatnot. But I'm hoping to go back with the energy and the desire to work on those because it's going to get very hot soon and I won't want to be working with that fabric on top of me. And um, so that's what I'll be up to. I'll be able to give you an update on those things and how I'm coming along finishing up this bag in a couple of weeks. So until we meet again, keep yourself safe, 
keep yourself healthy and keep crafting. Bye for now. Lama, 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 Lama,